Hello everyone, welcome to Cookroid. In the last video, we made a singleton class with help of private constructor and the static get instance method and used it in the client called country. And we simply get the instance. If you want to follow along how we made this government class, I will put the link in the description box below. You can follow along with that. In this video, I will be talking about the main problem that we see in the singleton class, which is execution of the singleton class in a multi-threaded environment. To do that, what we'll do is in our client, we'll create multiple instances and see if the singleton class is actually a singleton. What do I mean by that is the main definition says it should always have one and only one instance. So we'll try and see if we have and if we can have only one and only one instance. For that, what I'll do is in my constructor, I'll write a sysout statement. And I'll just say government established. And then from my country client, I will have multiple instances. Government one, let's say we have government two. Let's try to run it and see how many instances or how many instances of government gets established. So right now it's only one, which is what the singleton should do. But let's see how it behaves when we run multiple threads and create the get instance or call the get instance method. So for that, I'll use the runnable interface. I'll just say I'll call the runnable interface. And in this run method, I will call my first get instance. And then I'll copy paste this into another thread. I'll name it t2. And then at the end, I'll say t1.start and t2.start. I'll delete this. I don't need it. Let's try run the application now. OK, you will see that we have two government established print uh, statements got executed. That means that twice this constructor was called. That means twice the objects were created. Why does that happen is because when we start multiple threads, they start at the same time. And when this method gets called from thread one, it will see government is null and it will create a new instance. And thread T2 will also do the same. It will check out that government is null and it will just create a new instance. Now, it is exactly opposite of what the singleton should do because singleton only one, we should have only one and one object. Now, how to fix this problem? Uh, one way to fix it is to give it to the JVM and ask him to create the government instance at the time of class load. How can we do that? Is at this time when we are declaring this government object, we can simply say, uh, we can initialize it as well. This is called eagerly creating instance. The way we have in this get instance method is called lazy initialization uh, because we are first checking if it's null. If it is, then and only then we are creating the new government. If not, we are simply returning. This is called lazy initialization, whereas this is called eagerly initialization. So I'll delete this and simply from over here, I'll say return government. Because now what will happen is as soon as this application gets loaded in the JVM, JVM will see that it needs to create a new in, uh, new object at the time of class load. And then as soon as our application runs, we will have the government object initialized. Now, if we try and run this in the same multi-threaded environment, let's see what will happen. Awesome. So we have only one uh, print statement gets executed. This is what we want. Now, this was one way to achieve it. The second way to achieve it is using the keyword called synchronized. How I will do it is I'll just say I will just create it. Uh, I will just do the lazy initialization again. And I'll say if government equal equal null. Government equals to new government. But in, over here, I'll add the keyword name synchronized. What will happen with synchronized is when thread T1 calls the get instance method, JVM will see that it is a synchronized method. 
and it will not allow any other thread to enter and execute line number 23 uh, in our case uh, until the thread t1 completes the execution of this method meaning it's synchronized how that helps out is once t1 methods gets executed from start to end then only another thread t2 can start its execution and same way for t3 and for t4 so let's try and run our application again so you can see that this is what we wanted but now the problem with this is do we really think that we need synchronized keyword for all the threads because once we have our government uh, initialized for the rest of the threads we don't need to call synchronize because any number of threads can then call it as many times or in multi threaded environment uh, as per se and they would they would not have to initialize it because it's already initialized so what this does is it drastically reduces the performance of our application because it is again all the threads are synchronized in our case is just two threads but in your application or in the production based application there are thousands and like thousands threads that are hitting your application per second so it will drastically reduce uh, the performance of this class specifically uh, i will be talking about the solution for that in my next video which will be the part 3 of singleton pattern the approach is called as double checked locking in that approach we remove the problem which we see now that all of our threads are synchronized in that we just do first thread synchronization and as all we don't check the synchronization so i will be covering that in my third part of this uh, series so stay tuned for it please subscribe if you think i deserve it and stay tuned thank you